In today's video, we will take a look at Roll for the Galaxy, a spin-off of the popular Race for the Galaxy, and teach you how to play in about 18 minutes, here on Legendary Tactics. So we're going to walk you through the tutorial for Roll for the Galaxy. And if you've played Race for the Galaxy, you will see some commonalities if you haven't uh, tried Roll for the Galaxy quite yet. Uh, so I'm going to zip through it as fast as I, uh, as I can while still making sense. So uh, Roll for the Galaxy is an empire building game, uh, very similar to uh, Race for the Galaxy. Um, and through a series of rounds, you place tiles into the space uh, empire. Now in uh, this game, the tile uh, costs three and is worth three. So the tiles are, are um, you know, the it's simplified system where the, the cost and the value of the uh, tile is the same. So that's, uh, that's really good. Um, and uh, like Race for the Galaxy, once uh, a player's built 12 tiles, the game will end. And uh, also if the uh, victory point pool is exhausted, the game will end. And then we see who has the most victory points at that uh, stage. Um, as far as setup goes, each player starts with a unique set of tiles and workers. There's a double tile in uh, the em your empire, which is uh, essentially your faction. And so we'll just take a quick look at it. And this essentially gives you a bonus for cyan or blue uh, workers. As you can see, it gives you plus one a dollar for each novelty die in your citizenry at the end of the phase. Citizenry is essentially your pool of available uh, dice, not, necess not necessarily the ones you're going to roll every time. But um, And then this has a, a world to gain a novelty good on this world at the start of the game, so it gives you a good starting point. You can see the good here on top of the pilgrimage world. And now we'll take a look at the opponent, and the opponent is much more geared towards the uh, the green faction. Uh, genes and uh, so that's something to keep in mind and uh, each player starts with uh, two white workers now they call the the dice uh, are called workers and again the citizenry is the available pool of uh, workers uh, that are available um, to draw from to put in your cup and that you roll and there are three white workers in the cup to begin any workers uh, uh, that the starting faction and world provide are also uh, included. Now these are in the citizenry. So if you see Epsilon, uh, Eridani, uh, if you look here in the citizenry box, there's a blue and red die there. And we'll uh, get to why the colors matter in a little bit. And you start with a credit. So that hopefully that uh, you won't spend that all in one place. All right, and now is construction, and this is kind of a, I think, one of the more intriguing mechanics of the uh, of the game. So you can see you've got a develop uh, development construction and settling construction essentially, um, and you get you draw two tiles to start, and each uh, tile has a, a development on one side and a world on the other side, and you assign them to their development construction uh, zone. And one is assigned to the development side, one is assigned to the world construction zone. And what you can do is if you drag this over here, you can see that it flips. So you can choose which uh, one, which combination you want to start with, but they can go back kind of back and forth, which is neat. So we're going to start with that one there. And uh, now the tiles are queued in your construction zone and uh, and when you construct, they can actually be placed in your empire. Now, it's important to realize that they are queued. Uh, so the order of them does matter. Um, so as far as rolling the dice goes, each round starts with all players rolling the, the dice, uh, which is their workers from the cups, and uh, to do that in secret. And the dice represent workers. So, um, And the assignment is how... Uh, players take actions every round, and you can see there's a, a, a development symbol, an explore, exploration symbol. Um, this is a, a production symbol and a, and a construction symbol. So they match the phases down below, um, which uh, so we're going to drag these across to the spot where they belong. Now in the game, there's an auto button, which will allow you to do this automatically. The tutorial makes me do this uh, bit by bit, just to illustrate. 
Now each player locks in one phase that is guaranteed to happen. So just like you would choose a role in Race for the Galaxy and that is guaranteed to occur, uh, we're going to lock in the settle phase um, by placing one on the lock uh, uh, spot there. So that means that uh, all players will take the settle phase uh, of, of assignments. And then we reveal everything simultaneously, including which uh, phases have been locked in. Um, and in a two-player game, there's one locked in at random as well. So we locked Settle, and our opponents locked uh, Explore, and then Ship got locked by uh, random chance. So, uh, so during this round, we'll all get to do Explore, then Settle, then Ship. And the more workers you've assigned to each category uh, of those three, uh, the more actions we'll have during those phases. And if any workers got assigned to phases no one locked, they're just returned to the cup. Um, you can, however, reassign workers into non-matching phases. So for example, if you get an asterisk here, uh, that worker is wild and you can assign that worker to any phase you like. Also, uh, tile powers can sometimes give you a reassign uh, power in your empire. So let's take a look at this. So you may reassign one worker to any phase. So that means we can drag this explorer worker to the develop phase um, because of that galactic influence uh, effect. So that's great. The third way you can do it is using the locked die. Uh, so the locked die does not have to match the phase that you want, uh, which I like that because if you get a bad rule, uh, you're not, you don't have to take you know the action that is uh, not useful to you so we can put this in any one we can put this in the production uh, thing here and that's great and then fourth finally you can do dictate and once per round you can dictate one worker to reassign another worker to a non-matching phase and I'll show you how this how this works here so uh, I'm gonna drag a worker to the dictate zone so you kind of sacrifice one of your dice one of your workers in order to reassign another worker to a phase which doesn't match. So let's say we go to the production one here. So it's kind of a one for one trade that uh, you can. Uh, so you have some flexibility in, in terms. You're not totally at the mercy of the dice. Uh, you, you have some flexibility in terms of how you can allocate things. Um, and uh, now at the end of the dice assignment, the dictated worker returns to your cup for use next turn. Um, and otherwise, the dice must, must match the phase to which they are assigned. So we'll look at explorer, exploring now. And explorers give you two options. You can either uh, draw new tiles or get credits. So if the explorer phase has been locked, each explorer, so every dice we have, which has the eyeball on it, uh, essentially, uh, can be used to stock or, or scout. So we can, uh, I think this uh, sh shipping dice was used for uh, the locking, so that's why it doesn't match. But we're gonna gain two credits, and credits are spent at the end of the turn to uh, recruit more workers into your cup. So essentially you spend uh, all of your money uh, to, uh, uh, to fill the cup with dice. Um, so the explorer used to, to stock is returned to the citizenry. Again, citizenry is the dice pool you draw from. Uh, and roll the, some, uh, some or all of the dice from that. Um, workers are always returned to the citizenry after use. And then if we do some scouting, we drag an explorer here and we get uh, some, we take a look at our tiles. Now we have some tiles here that are um, maybe ones that we don't want. And so uh, we can uh, discard them at this time to draw more tiles on a kind of one for one trade. So looking at our our power, cyan worlds are our focus. So we have this runaway robots thing. We don't need it. So we're going to discard that. And if you look, that allows us to draw two instead of one. So now we can draw two new tiles. And once they um, uh, are in, in place, we can we can flip them. It, we can choose which uh, side they they want to be on. So we see whether we like the the development here, whether we prefer the world. Now, we're a, a faction that loves cyan um, worlds, so we're going to add the Galactic Resort. And let's take a look at the other side of the Replicant Robots. Oh, great, Spaceport. So we're going to flip both of those to line things up for 
uh, to try and find some synergies that will, will work. Now again, these are, as I mentioned earlier, these are placed in a queue and the new ones are always placed at the bottom of the construction stack. You can kind of move them around within that, uh, the, the bottom of the stack. So you decide who, uh, which planet goes first or whatever in that case. Uh, but um, but the idea is that it's um, it's there is a queue and a development queue, which is uh, I think a really interesting mechanic. You got to figure out how to clear out the uh, the ones ahead of it in order to uh, get to the ones you might want sooner. Um, so developers are spent towards development tiles uh, like advanced uh, logistics. So once you have paid the cost, which um, these are these are powers that uh, may help you during specific phases, and they they uh, cost between one and six. The number represents both the cost and the, and the victory point value of the tiles, same as the planets did. So once we pay the cost, we drag a developer a development uh, dice over here. The cost is one. So now we can, we've paid for that dice. The dice goes back to the citizenry and we place advanced logistics into uh, the empire. Now the six uh, cost uh, developments are very expensive, but give uh, additional bonus victory points. So for example, this one uh, is worth uh, uh, six, uh, sorry, the, in our case would be worth 10. So it's six points plus one for each color worker in your control. And if you look at our citizenry here, it's a little bit faded, but there's white, yellow, blue, and red. So that is four different colors and gives us uh, 10 victory points. That's a really uh, good one, may even be worth more by the end of the game. However, it is expensive and so we can spend uh, dice and put them towards the development um, kind of prepaying or paying you know on an installment plan uh, to eventually buy that uh, galactic exchange now those dice are kind of tied in the, though they they are uh, not able to be used uh, until we have either paid the cost or given up and, and dragged the dice back out so um, we're out of developers for now um, we can, as it says here, we can um, finish building the Galactic Exchange on a future develop phase if, uh, if we get uh, the luck of the die roll. Now, settlers are spent toward world tiles. And so um, in the same way, so you've, uh, as you did the developments, we need to pay for uh, the, uh, the uh, world with dice that have the circle on them so they're placed into the construction zone and that's how we pay for them and those worlds often provide new workers for us so this adds one new blue worker cyan worker into your cup when we place it so we're going to drag over two settlers to pay for the spice world and click on place and we happen to have three more dice so we're going to drag now you see the auto here so i'm, I'm not going to click it but that just pays for it automatically and then you click on place and uh, that one came with a good on it so that's uh, that's great so we got a, a, a good on the uh, comet zone and worlds give a one-time bonus immediately when settling them as a general rule now we can also produce and producers become goods on production worlds and that's where you see this uh, blue uh, blue circle with the white good in front of it earth's lost colony um, that is a production world now these goods are produced in, essentially to earn either credits or victory points uh, throughout the game and we create a production engine in order to do that so um, so during the produce phase one good can be placed on each empty production world for uh, for every producer now we have two dice in the producer uh, field here uh, but we only have room for one good uh, as it sits so one of the workers is essentially uh, uh, wasted. So we can drag this onto the wormhole station and uh, that is good and we've produced and we now have two goods and these can be converted into victory points or credits during the shipping phase, which we'll go to. Now the shipping phase can trade a good for other uh, credits or consume it for those victory points. Um, so you drag a shipper to pick up the good on the pilgrimage world and then it, it's, it gives a very handy summary here. Uh, essentially, you get one victory point to, uh, to dra when you drag it over to the consume option. Plus, if the good color matches the world color, 
you get an extra victory point. Plus, if the shipper color ma dice worker ma matches the world color, you also get an extra victory point. So this is a, a three victory point play doing that because we matched everything up. Um, so that's the maximum th of three victory points um, that you can get. Now, purple workers are wild in this case. The purple shippers match any color. So we still would have earned three victory points in that case. And they help us win, but they but we also have to make sure we're not falling behind on credits. So we have another good. Uh, so we're going to be able to get some credits here. Now, in the next round, you'll, you'll roll the workers in your cup. But the cup is a little bit empty as it sits. So let's get some credits. And as I said, you, uh, you use those credits to transfer... Uh, workers or these dice from your citizenry the pool into the cup for rolling okay so trading a good yields credits so we'll drag this over here and we'll pick this up and this is the value of the different goods so yellow is the best but green isn't bad it's second best so we're gonna drag it to the trade side if we had put it on consume um, we wouldn't have the uh, we don't. We have two victory points. We because the sh the sh uh, shipping dice the doesn't match the good. So um, so we're gonna trade for five credits, and that leads us to the the end of the round uh, cleanup, and we're gonna check for victory. So after we've completed all the locked phases, we do a cleanup uh, for the new round. Now we have six credits, so we're going to recruit the workers from the citizenry. Um, and we have to recruit as many workers as we can afford. So since we have six credits, uh, we have to put all six, we have to spend all six of these and get a bunch of dice lined up. That's great. And um, so our citizenry only has one die left in it and that's fine. So you can also recall workers uh, to return um, them to your cup. And what that means is uh, if you have a stranded worker, as I mentioned earlier, there's some sometimes you, you try committing to a development. It's just not going to happen. Um, that's a, a very costly uh, thing. So we're just going to uh, drag this back to the cup. You always have that option. And uh, as soon as your credits hit zero, you gain one credit to start the, uh, the, next, uh, um, the next round. We finished the recall. And now let's uh, check for victory. Um, so each player has 12, if any player is 12 tiles in play or if the victory point pool is depleted, as we said earlier, the game is over and we score the victory points. So since this is not the case, it's on to the next round. Um, and whoever has the most victory points wins. That is essentially how to play Roll for the Galaxy. As I said earlier, if you have played Race for the Galaxy, you will find it very familiar, um, but with some unique uh, twists. And I think a little bit of a different uh, strategic approach. But I hope this uh, video helped you learn it. And uh, uh, if it did, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And we'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.